Parrots. People love them and they always will. We love parrots because of their beauty, their playfulness, and their intelligence. There are over 3 million households in the United States that have parrots, third only to cats and dogs. The pet bird industry earns millions of dollars annually by furnishing food, treats, and toys to every imaginable sized bird, from canaries to the elegant hyacinth macaw. But parrots are complex companions and often leave people wondering how to provide the best possible environment and how to address their almost boundless energy. Frustrated when they can't provide that, some people abandon their birds in shelters or rehome them, hoping to rid themselves of the responsibilities that parrots demand. But Ray Varela, an executive chef from Vallejo, California, knows there is at least one thing he can provide for them that they need, crave, and enjoy. He free flies them on Sundays in Woodland, California. We, we have a group that we meet with and free fly our birds, and it's been really beneficial both for the people and for the birds involved. Uh, they get out and, and they fly together and they interact socially together, and it's a very good thing you have people that can exchange ideas and talk about what training has been successful and what sort of behavior that might be unwanted that is evolving and how to circumvent that. Training a bird to fly free may seem simple and yet birds learn to fly when they are fledged. As pets, they learn this skill either from their parents or from the people who raised them, like Nina Lynn McNulty. At first, I didn't know the first thing about training. And really, if you want to have a parrot, have a successful relationship with a parrot, you better be somewhat of a trainer and understand how you act is going to determine how the bird acts. Okay, Anna, this time you're gonna do two circles, okay? Two circles, okay, come on back. The kind of success I've had with free flight, it's pretty interesting because I really am just an amateur. I just spend a little bit of time every day working with my birds to improve the relationship, and you just kind of get into a groove. And, and then you just happen to notice that, never mind the cue, the verbal cue, a hand gesture is enough. You call them to come to you. When they come, you, re you, you know, provide the positive reinforcement. Come on, Finn. Good girl. Aviculture really needs young people to be interested in, and uh, maybe they don't like the idea of, of keeping a bird in a cage and, and not having a whole lot of interaction with it or having to leave it unattended for long periods of time, um, but they want to fly it. and. If they could get into a school gymnasium or, or a batting cage or somewhere where the bird could get some sort of freedom, they'd, they'd get a taste of, of how you can work with a bird on a different level. And uh, I think that's going to be one of the ways that younger people get involved in aviculture because there's, there's a lot of birds in captivity and they need custodians that are younger than, than some of us. Uh, I plan to live a long time, but that doesn't mean anything. I first became interested in free flight when a good friend of mine, Tim Metz, introduced the lifestyle to me, invited me to come out and watch the West Wing Free Flight Club flying with uh, Ray Varela and Nina McNulty. Um, after seeing the birds flying, I really thought, gee, this is going to be the best lifestyle I could possibly provide for my macaws. I started working uh, pretty intensely with Nina, and she's been guiding me in the process and helping me um, to get my birds prepared for flight. And I'm really happy and excited that I was able to meet this group so that I can also give my birds um, a lifestyle that I believe is, is really the best for them and for me. People will show up and say, this is what I want to do. And it's like, well, are you absolutely certain that this is what you want to do? And you work with them and they show up and, and watch the birds fly and ask lots of questions. And you tell them uh, all the positives and all the negatives. And the, these are the sort of things you can run into. And the people that show up week after week and are still interested are excellent candidates. Parrots have highly evolved social structures and as long as you give them the right type of interaction, uh, they seem to do okay. They do okay if they are trained for flight. Training harnesses their energy and encourages them to do what they were born for. 
the, the matter of, of training an animal is control the environment so that they don't develop behaviors that you don't want to live with. Mm -hmm. And if you neglect to do that, uh, that's on you. It's not on the animal. They're very trainable when they're fully flighted, very trainable. All that you need to use is positive reinforcement and you'll be a magnet for them. Also, keeping the bird fully flighted, it's far less work for the, the owner, the trainer, because you don't have to go get the bird and move it around. The bird can do what it needs to do for itself. It has got, okay, it has a lot more control of its own life and that leads to a happier bird. Uh, before I bring a bird out, I make sure that they're recall trained, that they not only can can come to and from a short distance, but also find me by the sound of my voice. Uh, you know, when they're completely out of view and you call them, it prepares them for being outdoors and, and not having a line of sight to you. So if they're in a neighboring tree or uh, behind a building and they hear you, they'll, they'll know to get up and start looking. You ready? Go. 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 You don't want to go? You don't want to go. How about you go for a big flight? Go. I always thought that, that parrots could be very much like dogs, where you could take them places and, and they could interact in their environment and be fine. And then there were, in fact, ways to live with a, a free-flighted bird and, and uh, work with them um, and, and not keep them hungry all the time and, and be able to go on walks with them and that sort of thing. I really believe that free flight also helps with uh, negative behaviors that we do see. I think that flying and being free um, allows the birds to expend a large amount of energy and to do what is really instinctual for them and really what they were born to do. They have wings and flying should really be a part of their lifestyle. Another part of flight involves dangers in the skies. Those dangers can include predatory birds, such as goshawks and peregrine falcons. Or the parrot might fly away and not return to its owner until the next day, if even then. You've got responsibilities if you're going to live with flighted birds. You know, recall training them, teaching them about the dangers of the house. I even have my birds trained for danger outside. When I see something that is dangerous, I point to it and I say, danger, danger, and they look and they pay attention and I have seen them respond appropriately. You know, you wouldn't let a bird free fly outside that doesn't have the skills to save its own life. And those skills are, are developed optimally by giving it the chance to learn these skills at the right time of its life. So as a youngster just fledging, that's when its brain has the most capacity and potential to learn what it needs to learn to evade predators. I've always thought that a community aviary where people could meet and work with their birds and discuss training ideas and perhaps have some, some props and, and things that you could teach birds to do and, and offer guidance would be really beneficial to the bird community as a whole. I've, I've been uh, taking pictures and selling pictures and, and I intend to finance that very first community aviary in such a way and use it as a model and hopefully build upon that and perhaps get municipalities around the, the country, you know, in, in different environments where people have a lot of birds and could approach their city council and say, hey, we'd like to have an aviary where we can go work with our birds very much like uh, there's a dog park where people can go and, and have their dogs off leashes. And all of the proceeds from that are going to fund my community aviary project. Uh, the first one of these I'm going to put up after the first of the year in my front yard. I will be available to help people work and train with their birds and get them to have a, a fair understanding of training practices and behavioral modification, how to correct unwanted behavior, how to work with animals so they don't develop unwanted behavior in the first place. I think that I think it's also the relationship that people realize you're having a completely different relationship with your bird and people want that relationship. That's what it's all about.